Do you want to shortcut years of developing your photographer's eye? Do you want to have your own photography style now? Not many professional photographers will tell you this, but the fastest way to take your photography to the next level is to imitate what other photographers are already doing. My name is Mark Hemmings, and I'm an internationally recognized photographer and photography instructor. And in this video, I'll share with you five shortcuts to amazing photos. These are my best techniques that work like templates and guaranteed to produce stunning results every time. And the best part is, you'll still have the space to use your creativity while taking advantage of these powerful shortcuts. Okay, let's head to beautiful San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, and we can begin. Have you ever heard the term, less is more? Well, that really applies to this scene that I have here. Now, do you see the wonderful festive flags flying above the roadway? I really want to capture them. Now, normally, a typical tourist shot would include the cars on the side of the street and any people walking on the street, and that's okay, but we can do better. What I suggest is to really bring out the simplistic aspects of the photo. So what we can do is make use of the sky as a very neutral and plain background by going under the flags. Let me show you. When we use the simplification technique, getting rid of all of the clutter and only have that blue sky by shooting low, all of the viewer's attention goes straight to the flags. This is really good because it transforms your images from documentary straight into fine art photography. Now using the shooting low technique for creating simple shots is great, but you can also add it to your photographs of people or maybe your nature photography. Think of shooting low for a simple background against a beautiful tree. There's so many ways that you can shoot low to create the simple photography that you absolutely love and that will radically transform your photos. Now another really great way to add simplicity to your photos is to actually blur the background behind your subject. For example, do you see this beautifully lit greenery behind me? I absolutely love it and I want to get a picture of it. The only problem is if I take a standard shot, uh, I get a lot of background information and a lot of clutter around the picture. Let me show you. Okay, now that was an, an okay picture, but we have a lot of background information, a lot of sort of clutter in the picture. We can do much better by simplifying getting a beautiful background blur. Now, to do that really easily, I'd like you to zoom your lens in all the way if you can. Also, I'd like you to choose the lowest aperture f-stop number. For example, maybe your lens aperture f-stop number has the lowest f-stop of f4 or f2.8. I'd like you to set it to that lowest f-stop number. To do this, aperture priority is the best way. So, Go to AV or A mode, depending on your camera manufacturer. Let's give it a try. Okay, do you see the background? It's so beautifully soft. It really works well. Simplicity is the key, and especially when you have that blurry background, you're gonna get it every time. Okay, now another really great tip in order to get simplicity into your photos is to move in close to the subject. Let me give you an example. I have this shot here where I, I kind of have a, a nice scene of the, the red flowers, but there's too much around the picture. However, if I move in really close, I can get a really dynamic, simple picture. Now keep in mind that you don't need a long super telephoto lens for this. Your kit lens will be fine. All you do is just move in. You can zoom in a little bit. Let's take a test shot and I'll show you. Okay, now, as you can see, this picture is much better than the previous one. There's no distracting elements. There's a nice, beautiful, soft background blur. It looks great. So remember, move in closer to your subject, and if you have to zoom in just a little bit, that would be great. Okay, now I'd like to talk to you about what we call burst mode. Now, burst mode can also be called rapid fire or continuous shooting, or sometimes even called sports mode, depending on your camera make and model. What's happening is your camera is taking many very quick consecutive photos one after the other. Because you have a fast moving subject, you want to get multiple photos because you're not quite sure what composition you want now. Well, rapid fire is the thing for you. So I'm going to actually show you how to do this. First, rapid fire mode is accessible in your camera 
through your menu system. Now each camera is different, however it's usually seen with a little icon that has two squares. This is called the rapid fire icon. Now next, I am going to actually do a demo and I'm going to wait for an interesting vehicle to come down this roadway. I'm on a bridge and I really want to make sure I have multiple photos in my collection because at this point I don't know the exact composition that I want for printing and framing. That's the value of rapid fire. Okay, so let's do some shooting. Okay, I definitely have the shot. I love Volkswagen Bugs, especially from an aerial perspective. Now, the reason why I like this particular shot is because I have some really great dynamics of shadow, highlight. I have an aerial view, which is very exciting. But the real value of rapid fire is that afterward, you can choose whatever composition you want because you have so many choices. In fact, maybe one of the pictures has a group of people on either side of the street that look better than the other. That's why rapid fire is so useful to your photography. Have you ever taken a portrait photo and you really weren't happy with the end result? Well, it's quite possible that you photographed the model or your friend from a high position. For example, maybe you were taller than the model and they sort of look disempowered or small. There's a really quick and easy fix. All you need to do is get lower than the model and shoot up. It really empowers the model. Now, keep in mind that you want to zoom your lens in and in aperture priority, choose the lowest f-stop number possible. For example, for me, I'm shooting at f2.8. Let's see what happens. This is the normal shot. While it's okay, when I kneel down and get lower than the model, it's gonna be even better. Nice. Now let's look at these pictures side by side. As you can see, the shot where I was much lower looks far better, much more drama. Now another really interesting and dynamic compositional tool is finding elements that are the same. We call them repeating elements. They're the same shape, same size, and usually have three or five or even more of them. Archways are a perfect example, but there are so many, even in nature, that we can find. Now take a look at this scene here. We have very beautiful archways. We have about five of them, and they recede into the distance. However, they're the exact same size, but when we take the picture, I want to show you what happens. It's really interesting. As you can see, those beautiful archways get smaller and smaller and smaller, but in reality, they're all the same size. Now, I'd like to give you a few technical considerations for getting a shot like this with repeating elements. A zoom lens is really great. It really pushes into the subject and it makes it look fantastic. Also, aperture priority at uh, probably about f8 or f11 aperture is, is good. We don't want any background blur. We want all of the archways to be nicely sharp, so keep that in mind. Now about angle. Make sure that you're at about a 25 degree angle to your subject. If you're any more than that, you probably lose the repeating elements effect. And finally, I love to finish off pictures like this in black and white. It's really great, especially if the repeating element is old world architecture. If you have a tripod, I do encourage you to use a tripod. However, if it's in the day and you don't need one, then that's perfectly fine. But tripods will always give you a sharper picture. Having your subject sharp, but the background blurred is one of the coolest photography effects. You can capture a moving car or a cyclist that's fairly sharp, but with motion blur all around. The best way to achieve this result is to use a technique called panning. This is when we track our subject with the camera as it is passing us by. This way, the subject will remain in focus while the rest of the background will become blurry because of the camera movement. Okay, I'd like to give you an example of just how we do this. Now, I'm gonna wait for a really interesting looking car or uh, someone on a motorcycle to go by me, and I'm going to pan my camera to track the subject and let's see what happens. Okay, so I had a really great surprise. I got two people walking up the street, one with a huge collection of balloons. Now as you can see, the background is blurry, but the people are actually sharp because they're moving pretty quickly. This is really great. Now one little thing, I want to give you a technical note, is that when you're doing this type of photography, it's always best to photograph 
at around dusk or just before the sun sets because we want low light. Low light usually means a slower shutter, which means that you can actually get this panning effect. It's really effective. Also, you may need to go to manual focus. Not always, but if you have a hard time focusing when you're doing this effect, switch to manual focus and you should be absolutely fine. Now, about camera modes. I personally like to use aperture priority because I'm used to it and I feel I have a lot of control. However, for this type of scene, shutter priority works really well as well because you can actually control how much blur there is in the background when you're doing the panning shot. For more blurry background, you would actually go to f11 if you're at f8 because that will provide a slower shutter speed. However, if you feel it's way too blurry and it doesn't look good, you could actually go to f5.6, which would actually give you a slightly faster shutter speed, which would actually control how much background blur you have. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you got a lot of value out of it. Now, there's so much more I'd like to tell you about photography. And while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could share with you in a short video like this. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about photo shortcuts that will take your photography to the next level and jumpstart your creativity. So if you'd like to find out more about my photo shortcuts course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full photo shortcuts course and I hope to see you there.